Greetings and welcome to the Introduction to Processing webinar. Let's go ahead and do a little sound check. Go ahead and drop a little note into the questions window to confirm that you can hear our audio. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and get started. Once again, this is the Introduction to Processing webinar. <clears throat> processing is a lightweight programming sketchbook for designers offering an easy entry point for creating rich graphics, developing interactive applets, and researching complex systems. Through a series of short presentations and live exercises, we're going to learn the basics of writing programs in Processing's Java-based syntax while experimenting with user input and drawing output. So I'm Gil Akos, and here with me is Ronnie Parsons. We are Mode Collective. And Mode is a multidisciplinary design collective located in Brooklyn, New York. We have three interrelated sub-entities that are a part of the collective that fall under the terms or names Lateral, Design, and Lab. Lateral is a consultancy practice for um, custom tool creation and digital fabrication. Design is our design practice where we do um, projects that include products and um, design spaces as well. And Lab is our share source initiative that consists of a web repository for the creative use of design technology, which includes a series of monthly webinars such as the one we're doing now, as well as bi-monthly workshops and other uh, learning resources that are posted on our website, Mode Lab. <clears throat> so, um, as a part of Mode Lab, um, you hopefully have been here because you've uh, signed up for this webinar. Um, and in addition to the webinars, we also offer workshops, which are um, longer in duration, they're two days, and um, focus on a particular topic. And this is a recent workshop that we conducted called Lattice Lab, where we were looking at topological modeling and 3D printing. This happened uh, in November and um, was looking at how we might uh, use uh, parametric logics and subdivisions to uh, produce smooth and continuous shapes and prepare those shapes for 3D printing. And if you haven't already, um, uh, it'd be great if you connected with us on Facebook. This is the, uh, the means by which you can access the most up-to-date and current information regarding upcoming events as well as new learning content that's posted uh, to our website. So um, if you haven't already, uh, pop over to facebook.com backslash mode collective and give us a thumbs up. So what are we going to cover today? Um, we're going to look at what is processing and how do you create a program. And if we're going to start programming, what are the basic building blocks that we'll be using? Importantly, where might I find some references and additional help? And then we're also going to look at some topics that include how can my user interact with my program? So we can look at some simple behaviors and um, techniques for developing interaction. And then lastly, what are some of the different drawing methods for my sketch? So a couple of notes before we uh, dive into these topics uh, related to administration. The webinar will last two and a half hours and will include question and answer sessions in between each exercise that we uh, review. We're going to record this webinar and distribute it later um, as a series of shorter videos so that you may come back and reference them in the future. You should have received an email um, about 12 hours ago or so uh, with a link to the webinar source files and uh, as well as a link to download processing. And if you didn't uh, receive that email or you missed it, the link is also posted in the uh, message window. Um, for both the processing download as well as uh, the source files for today. So the files that are um, that we've shared with you that are the source files for today, uh, they're for your reference. They're labeled sequentially, and we'll be developing each one of those files from scratch together. And we'll also be saving those uh, working files that we developed together, and we'll distribute those as well after the conclusion of the webinar. Um, so if we did anything that's slightly different or um, a little bit more interesting or we went on a tangent based on your questions, you'll have those for your reference as well. 
So Ronnie and I are both conducting this webinar simultaneously. Ronnie will be answering technical questions on the fly through the GoToWebinar uh, interface. So if you have any questions at all, you should feel free to drop them into the questions window uh, through your GoToWebinar um, logon. And uh, as we go, if there are any uh, consistent or relevant topical questions uh, that come up in your questions, Ronnie will be um, redirecting those to me, and I'll be um, going over them uh, with you together as a group. And the idea here is that we really want to create a live and interactive experience as much as possible through this webinar format. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into um, the webinar content. And we said that uh, we're going to be using processing today, so let's take a moment to talk about what processing is and how we're going to approach it. So processing is an open source programming language and accompanying environment for people who want to create images, animations, and interactions. So um, as a programming environment, let's take it another step further and talk about what programming is. Programming is just creating a set of instructions in order, in a particular order, to perform specific operations or exhibit desired behaviors. So as we're developing our programs, um, we need to be conscious of uh, two key uh, characteristics of the program, or sometimes a program can also be called a script in a more informal way. And we need to be conscious of both structure and syntax. And this is um, an issue that we need to be conscious of whether or not we're developing a program in processing or Rhino script or Python or any application that has um, a scripting interface or a programming interface as well. So structure just controls the flow of operations and is generally consistent across languages. So the concepts behind the structure of a program are going to be consistent whether or not you're uh, developing that program in processing or Python. On the other hand, syntax is the collection of rules and principles of the program structure. And this is definitely going to be more unique per language. Some languages, such as uh, C, C++, or Java, which is what we'll be using today, are more formal in the requirements of their syntax. Others are uh, more loose, or they're more uh, focused on readability. I would characterize Python as one of those types of scripting languages. So processing is based upon the programming language Java. Therefore, it inherits all of Java's structures and syntax. So a couple of um, key things to note about Java. Uh, Java is a general purpose, object-oriented language, and it is specifically designed to work across all platforms. The idea uh, that the developers had for Java is that you can write your program once, and it works everywhere. Um, so in that way, it is very much general purpose. We can use it for computer graphics and developing drawings, as well as you can develop web interfaces and things like that through Java. And uh, we won't, won't get in too much into this today, but one of the main powers of using Java is that it's object-oriented. And, it, and we'll kind of talk a little bit about what object-oriented means at the end of the webinar, um, but suffice it to say that it makes things really uh, convenient in terms of how we structure our code and very powerful. And if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, next week we'll be having a, a follow-up webinar on dynamic behaviors that will go into uh, a, almost entire exclusively object-oriented techniques. So a couple of notes about the syntax and processing. We'll be covering the fundamentals of structure as well, but uh, because syntax is uh, more specific to each language, we need to be conscious of a couple of, uh, of key items. The first of which is that processing is case sensitive. So a lowercase m versus a uppercase m are different in terms of how processing understands those characters when we're writing our scripts. Uh, secondly, all lines, and once we're finished or we are concluding a statement in our program, we have to finish that line with a semicolon. This is one of the um, errors that any even experienced programmer might uh, miss as we're developing our program. Um, and we'll talk a lot about uh, making sure that we have our semicolons in place. 
And the last uh, key thing to note here is that our variables, which we'll, we'll define what variables are, but when we're using them, we have to specify what type they are going to be uh, right when we say that we want to declare a variable. 